Hey guys, Kurt here of NK Garage, and today we're going to go over the Harbor Freight US General drawer liner for toolboxes or whatever else you want to use it for. It's a good rubber mat for any application you might want. So the reason why I bought it is because recently I purchased this snap-on toolbox in the background. Let me turn around. But recently I purchased this snap-on toolbox. It's a 1983 and it had drawer liners in it at some point. Somebody put these in and they're shot. This is just, this is no good. So basically I was looking for something to replace it. Same kind of premise, just a thin uh, protective mat to protect the toolbox, protect the tools and just keep things from moving around. So I did some research. I asked you guys, the viewers, your opinion and what you use. And what I came up with is the best solution for me was the US General stuff. And there's a couple reasons why I chose this. One came recommended by a lot of viewers. It also was recommended on a lot of online forums when I did some research myself. It also comes in two different sizes. So you have the 22 inch roll and you have the 18 inch roll. Now, some of the other companies like Husky makes a drawer liner. I almost bought at Home Depot the other day, but it was only 18 inch. And when I measure my toolbox, these drawers, the depth is actually 19 inches. So that the 18 inch was gonna leave me an inch short and I didn't want that. Now, of course, I could run it the other way and cut it and you'll still get full coverage in a single piece in drawers like these, but in these large open drawers like this one, I just did this one this morning, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. There would be an inch gap at the back and I didn't want that. So I bought the US General stuff because they have the larger dimension and I really only cut off, you know, three inches right off the end, so I didn't even have that much waste. So this is actually the first mat I cut. It has a little bit of bubbling and whatnot here, but I'm sure the tools will, will press that down over time. If not, I can always trim a little bit off the edges where it's sticking out a little bit. But let's go back to reasons why I bought this. Husky stuff was almost twice as much than the US General stuff. And the U.S. General stuff is pretty good. It comes in all the U.S. General boxes, of course, and we've had three of those boxes over the last five years or so, and the drawer liner has held up well and, and worked good for us. So I didn't have a problem spending the money and getting these. I actually bought these online on the Harbor Freight online store. I bought six rolls of the 22-inch by 118-inch and that came and shipped to my house about $98. And that's not bad, that's a lot of material. You know, this is not a small box. And these older boxes, the drawers are really low profile. So we've got eight drawers on the bottom and 12 on the top. That That's a lot, it's a lot of space to cover as why I needed six rolls. I'm going to use most of this. I, I might have a little bit left over and that's fine in case I need to replace some later on. But I want to make sure I had plenty enough to do the entire box. So in order to install this stuff, you're going to need a couple of basic tools. You know, first off, you're going to need a tape measure or something, you know, equivalent to, to measure the, the depth and length of your drawers. You're gonna need a razor blade knife and you'll need some kind of marking tool. Here, I'm just gonna use this Sharpie. And something I don't have, you're gonna want a nice straight edge. Uh, I'm working in my shed here today. If you guys have watched the channel for a while, you realize that I got this shed a couple weeks ago and I don't have a nice straight edge in here. So today I'm actually working with this piece of, of plywood. <laughs> so mine aren't gonna come out perfect. I, I don't, I'm not looking for 100% perfect, like I did this one with it this morning, and it's it's pretty good. Uh, I might have to trim it a little bit later on maybe, but you know, I didn't get it 100% square because this isn't like a nice professional carpenter square. I have a little bit of gap over here in the corner, maybe an eighth an inch, and that's it. So for me today, uh, I'm going to do some drawers because 
I gotta move things around. You know, I've got tools in here. So, you know, some drawers are open, some drawers have stuff in it, some drawers are, it, it's mixed. I've kind of been setting this up and I've also been working with it, you know, as we go along here. So, it's a work in progress and I'll be doing this a little bit at a time. I've only got a little bit of time today, so I'll probably knock out a couple drawers, uh, take my time and do a nice job. Little update for you guys, if you've been uh, watching the channel pretty frequently, you'll know I got a bunch of rusty sockets recently that are over here in this bin. And I dumped a bunch in the Evaporust probably about a week ago, I think it was last weekend. And I haven't even had the time to, to, to deal with it, so it's been in there about a week. I actually pulled one out after two days, this nice SK socket here. Pulled it out and then I ran it on my bench grinder. Uh, I got this red Brillo pad attachment here because this wire wheel was actually too much uh, for just removing, you know, light debris and, and surface corrosion. So I bought myself a nice magnet tool. If you're doing the five gallon bucket method like I do, uh, you're going to need some kind of magnet tool to get these things out of here. But this is a brand new bucket of evaporust and I know a lot of you guys have been wondering you know how do we clean these rusty sockets well we do it like this I put them in the evaporust let them sit for a little bit and as you can see they're coming out and they're looking pretty good I'm not gonna pull all of them out right now there's probably 50 something sockets in here but I just wanted to show you guys I've, I've been getting asked about this all the time people are very curious and I haven't had the time to really sit down and, and, and do a whole video where I do like the whole cleaning process. It's just a, a bit more involved than our standard videos. And eventually, I promise guys, I'm going to get that kind of content out. But in order to do that, I need to set up some tripods and put some cameras on time lapse. And then check the footage to make sure everything is actually looking good. So it's going to have a little bit of trial and error to it. And we'll get there. Coming soon, I'll say. But, I mean, as you can see, you know, this stuff's looking pretty good. Now, originally, I went, I picked up this bench grinder last weekend at a tag sale. I actually got it for 25 bucks, which is a steal. I pulled all the guards off it because I'm using the wire wheel and the Brillo brush. And since I'm not using a grinder wheel, those guards are actually more in the way than they are actually helping me. So, I took those off. And basically, what I like to do is I like to take the stuff out of the evaporust. I like to clean it off, get all the evaporust off of the stuff. And I've done this multiple ways. Uh, I've been using this stuff for a little over a year. And originally, sometimes I would just take them and stand them up and just let them dry. Then take the socket and just polish it up on the bench grinder here. So. This bench grinder came with this wire wheel, and it's way tougher than the ones that we use at, at Nick's Garage. So I ended up buying this Brillo pad because it's enough just to clean it up. And then you got a nice socket, and now that it's you know not wet anymore, this is just bare steel sitting here, and this hasn't flash rusted this week, so that's pretty good. But I do recommend that you put a little bit of oil or WD-40 on there uh, just to protect it long term. But basically, I'll probably just let these dry. Uh, in Nick's garage, I usually run them through soapy water and, and then polish them all up. But that's when I have the time to do it all at once. And the reason why I like to use the soapy water is because this stuff gets a little sticky, the evaporust. But here I'm not really going to worry about it. Uh, I'm just going to let them sit here and dry. And then I'll run them on the bench grinder later. But I just want to show you guys that. And now we'll get back to the drawer liner. So... I'm gonna pause the camera for a second. I'm gonna just clean up a little bit and then I'll roll out some mat. We'll do a little quick little demonstration here and we'll get back to it. All right, time to get down to business. So this is the drawer in question. We'll go ahead and remove this piece of junk. And I've already done some cleaning in here. It's not perfect, but this is, is good enough for me for now because this is all like I said, a work in progress. Eventually I'd love to completely restore this, this tool chest, but for now I'm just replacing the drawer liner and getting it set up so at least I can work in here. So this is 
pretty clean, clean enough for me. All right, so I'll take my tape measure and I'll measure and we'll see that it's a little over 19 inches. It's actually pretty much a 19 and a half inches. So I'm gonna go for 19 and 3 eighths. I'm gonna leave myself eighth inch of room to spare. And then in the other direction, we're at about 15 and a half. So I think I'll also do 15 and 3 eighths. So we got 19 and 3 eighths by 15 and 3 eighths. We'll roll out the mat here. Bear with me. I am all by myself today. So, all right. Now, from the other one I did before, uh, I know that my direction down here is going to be my 19 inches because I only have a couple inches to spare. And then over here, we'll do the 15 inches so that we have the least amount of waste because although this stuff is cheap, it'll add up over time and we want to save money. So, I'm going to do this direction first just to separate it from the roll because I kind of feel like the roll is in my way. It's just how I feel. And I'm just going to put a mark here at our 15 and 3 eighths like I said. And there goes somebody in a nice diesel truck. All right, 15 and 3 eighths. I got two little dots good enough for me I'll take my super handy dandy mega not accurate piece of lumber and I'll line it up as best I can like I said if you're doing this and you have access to a carpenter square definitely use it because you'll get a much better result than I'm gonna get and once that's on there then I can take my razor blade And just put a nice good score on here. I missed my mark on the bottom a little bit. Probably going to be a little shy. Like I said, I'm trying to do this all by myself and film at the same time. But our width is looking pretty good. Like I said, we're a little bit under. I went for that eighth inch to spare and then I... Missed the bottom mark a little bit because I'm trying to film at the same time. So we bought a, we got about a quarter inch gap, but that's, that's not bad. Now we just have to trim the other dimension. I really need to get a tripod. I think that would help a lot. All in time. I actually want to get a better camera. Uh, Nick recently bought a set of microphones so we can get some better audio. It's all in the works. It's all in the works. Okay. 19 and 3 eighths. And down here, I'll do 19 and 3 eighths. This one should be a little bit easier because it's a smaller, smaller run. Um, also, my piece of wood is sitting on this edge here. This workbench came with the shed, and I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the, the lipped edge. I'd rather just have something solid. I'll probably end up taking that off and this masonite off, because I believe there's just two by lumber under here. I think I'd rather be on that. So, we'll get there. I got another piece of wood down here. This might be better. That'll be a little easier for me. All right, let's see what we can do here. That's not bad. It's not bad. I don't know if this stuff has an up or down. Uh, this side, well, this back side has these lines on it, and I don't really like looking at those, so I've been putting those down. Uh, I don't know if it has an actual directional side. There was no, no writing on the package saying do it this way or do it that way. But there we go. That piece is installed. And like I said, I gave myself intentionally eighth inch of extra room if i was using a square it'd be very square this one is not perfectly square but it is uh what i consider good enough 
especially once you cover it in your tools. I just like that it's not too big. I'd rather be a little bit under than a little bit over. And then we can put pliers in. I haven't even figured out what tools I want to be in here, what drawer I want them to be in, but I've been throwing random pieces in here and there. But there you go, that's one drawer installed. And it's pretty good. You know, this stuff comes, like I said, in all the US general carts, and it, it holds up. I've actually bought some uh, magnetic wrench racks that they sell at Harbor Freight. So there's a magnet on the bottom and you put it in there there's like they're adjustable so there's two stands one on the left and one on the right and you adjust them to the width and angle that you need depending on what kind of wrenches you have how long they are what size is metric sae so it's completely adjustable and at first we put them right on top of the harbor freight mat and they have a magnet on the bottom and it was well, the magnet works through this thin material but they were falling over. So what I did is I found out exactly where we needed the wrench racks to be. I outlined them, cut it out with a razor blade, and between the magnet and then them just having that little bit of resistance, they, they stop falling over and they actually work quite well. I really do like those Harbor Freight wrench racks because if you have wrenches, you know, they're all different. You got combination wrenches, you got box wrenches, you got open wrenches. You have all different sizes, and depending on what range of sizes you have, you might have you might be starting at you know six millimeter. You might be starting at ten millimeter. You might be starting at twelve millimeter. I don't know. It depends on your toolbox and your tools. So you can adjust the width of those two racks. You might have stubby wrenches. You might have regular length wrenches. You might have the long wrenches. So you can adjust all of that for what you're working with and it works out really well. So eventually, you know, I would love to have that in here. Although these drawers are too shallow. Right now I think my wrenches, they are right here. And I don't have a lot of wrenches in here. This is not a lot of wrenches to me. Uh, this is actually starting to fill up pretty fast. I've got six millimeter through 24 millimeter here. And then on the SAE side, I've got five sixteenths through one inch, but at Nick's Garage, we have six millimeter all the way up to 32 millimeter. And then in inches, we're a quarter inch up to like, I think an inch and seven eighths, or no, an inch and, inch and seven sixteenths. Yeah, inch and seven sixteenths. So obviously that all would not fit in here. I'm still figuring out what goes where, but this is going to be a limited amount of tools. It's just a shed. All right, um, off camera, I pulled the rest of the stuff out of the Evaporos just because it's something that I need to do. And now I can at least show you guys what happens when you put something like this into Evaporost. You'll get something like this and you'll get various results depending on how bad these tools were like you got some sockets that come out really nice like this Williams one this one really didn't have a lot of rust on it but if you look inside it gets all that rust out of the inside even if it's just a little bit but it it makes it so nice and that's what I really love about the Evaporos because it's hard to clean these insides you can go in there with a small little wire wheel but you'll never get it perfect and the Evaporos pulls all that out then you got some stuff that might have been heavily pitted. This is an old snap-on socket. And obviously it was, the rust was past the chrome and it was heavily pitted in here. But it removed all that. And looking at the, you know, points in here, it actually is still pretty good. It's definitely a usable socket. It'll never be a nice looking socket. You, you could restore it, I guess, but Practically, it doesn't make sense to do that, but it's still a usable socket. Uh, impact stuff comes out really nice. Really nice. Like this, practically, by the time I clean this up, it'll look brand new. I'll probably cut camera again, do a little bit of work on there, 
and then show you guys the results. Like I said, I wish I could show you the, the process, but then I'd have to set up a, a tripod, which I don't have. And in the shed, I have limited space as well, so I'll have to work on that and figure that out. Got some of these snap-on chrome sockets. They come out pretty good. Um, some of these are quite bad. Definitely coming back to life. More impact stuff. I just really love saving this stuff because the guy I bought it from, he was about to throw all this out and he decided to put it on Facebook. He didn't even mention in the ad that he was going to give me all the rusty stuff. He was just going to give me the stuff that he had worked on and the stuff that wasn't that bad. And then he threw all this in later. Got this Craftsman socket. Look at all that chrome that is missing. These things were mistreated. But there's still, there's a lot of good stuff in here. And it's actually going to help me put together a half inch drive set because I don't have any half inch drive tools in this toolbox right now. So between all of this and all of that, and those two buckets are full of more tools. Hopefully I'll be able to get something started here. So let me go cut off camera, clean a couple of these up because I know you guys are curious and then we'll show you that. So we'll be right back. All right, so I cleaned up maybe like 20 sockets. The rest of them are still in there, but a couple of notes, guys. Just want to let you know, this grinder, this is an eight inch bench grinder and it rotates at 3,500 RPMs. The grinder that we use at Nick's garage actually only rotates at 1,750 RPMs, and it's only a six inch. And we use a very um, soft wire wheel on that. We didn't, we never tried the Brillo pad. I'm actually just trying that now. But the reason why I'm doing that is because this one spins more than twice as fast, and this wire wheel is very, very aggressive. So, First off, always wear your gloves. These actually aren't even enough. And I've actually upgraded and started using these lab goggles. Just gets you more face protection. I mean, you could wear a face shield, whatever you're comfortable with. I usually use safety glasses at Nick's house just because these uh, wires sometimes come undone and, and spring up. But with this, I'm actually flinging lots of uh, the Brillo material, as you can see over here. And sometimes I will switch to this side if I have something really bad that I want to take off. So there are those wire strands as well. And with some of these sockets that are so old and they're peeling chrome, uh, for example, you know, where's that Craftsman one? This one here. These chrome chips will fly off and, and they could get stuck in your eyeball or something. You, you don't want that. So... With the higher speed grind, I've never had this problem at Nick's house because his is, you know, much slower. It actually wants to really suck you in here. So that's actually why I removed the guards because before it actually wanted to suck you into the guard and, and you don't want that. But it has also stolen several sockets from me. I'll be cleaning them and then all of a sudden it takes it, it spins it under and it flings it against the back wall and they're now under the workbench. So I'll have to reach under there with the the magnet later and get those but if you are looking into grinders they do sell what they consider buffer grinders and they do spin at that half speed so that's something to consider i bought this because it was at a tag sale right down the street from my house and it was only 25 dollars, and that was a steal it came with this wire wheel and it came with this grinder wheel in here that's actually good and it works perfect it's actually really nice it's a beast One slice and smooth, and for 25 bucks, I just couldn't say no. So that's what I got for now. Eventually, I would like to have one also that runs at half speed, like the buffer wheel, and I might actually put some polishing wheels on that one so I can actually go a step ahead of this and start polishing sockets because, as you can see here, you know, it gets them pretty good. You know, these are looking good. These ones still have chrome on it, but like this SK one that doesn't have, you know, I think all the original chrome is pretty much gone. You could polish this up with a polishing compound, uh, make it shiny. Uh, you could even, I don't know, eventually I, I kind of want to try even, you know, just 
polishing up with possibly with oil. I don't know if that's even a thing you can do, but I'll try it out. But yeah, these sockets come out pretty well. You know, I've had a lot of experience cleaning up rusty sockets, and I'll tell you, the higher end brands, Matco, Mac, Snap-on, these sockets, they hold up so much better than the other brands. Like, this is obviously a really old Snap-on socket. It's been around, and it was in the same bin as all these other rusty sockets. And you get those low-tier brands. And pull up so, like these things, it's it's this is really bad. Like you can barely read it. Uh, the writing might actually be gone. There's stuff in here that even if I evapor rust it, there, there's going to be nothing left to the outside. It's I'm trying to find a good example. Even some of these lower tier sockets, see how all the chrome is just literally just falling off and peeling. Uh, here's another impact socket. You can just see that the entire actual functioning part of the socket is all bubbling and it's just, they, they just rust so much worse. You know, nobody should ever treat their tools like this, but sometimes it happens. But I found that the snap-on sockets you know, and some of these were, some of these are the worst that I've seen for snap on, but um, these are going to be good sockets. So I'll turn them all down here so you can take a look at the outsides. But, you know, some of the stuff comes out really well. You know, it all depends on condition and whatever. And you can always take it, you know, 10 steps further. Like this snap on socket that I was talking about with the pitting. I mean, there's, Nothing wrong with the points uh, or even, you know, where you put your tool in. So it's totally functional, but, I mean, you could always work on that. <laughs> you could always go further. But this is good enough for me. You know, I'll, I'll put some WD-40 on them, keep them from rusting. But I found that these higher brands, Snap-on, Maco, Mac, Mac um, even the Williams stuff, and uh, SK, the older SK anyways, Tend to, tend to hold up. The chrome is way better uh, as compared to I've seen a lot with the Craftsman stuff. The chrome where it just, I mean, it just falls off. It just peels so easy. Um, you know, some Craftsman stuff is good. Some of it's not. The quality control is here and there. But, you know, this is an old USA one. It's a G-Series. So I have seen a lot of Craftsman ones where the chrome just completely falls off like that, but I haven't really seen that on Snap on it. The chrome doesn't just start peeling like that. So that at least is just a little introduction to how I clean these tools. But I want to thank you guys again for watching. And if you have time, check out our other channel, Inky Landscaping LLC, links in the description, and also check out our eBay store. Uh, that's also in the description, 10% off with the code NKYouTube. If you go onto the store and start throwing things in your cart, you can have 10% off your entire order. So thank you again for watching. You guys have a great day. And if you want to leave a comment below, just give me some feedback. Tell me what you like about our videos, what you might not like about our videos, and what you want to see in the future, because it feedback means a lot to us. So thank you guys. Have a great day, and get out there and hunt down some tools.